Podcast. You were here since um, New York City's Chinatown for how many years? Since when? 1968, 60, right now it's over. When we were talking last time, you said uh, that back then it was just really hardcore. Like, it was, it was, it was kind of hardcore because, you know, um, there were gangs, and but there were also rivalries among some of the, um, the associations, the Tongs. Mm-hmm. Um, now they they were uh, were they affiliated with the gangs? Well, you know they tried not to use the gangs, but they were you know they were probably there for muscle for protection, and certain restaurants would have you know their little certificate plaques of the associated tongs that they would have on the restaurant. Some of the restaurants right, you right still see that. So, like I'll use an example since these are legitimate terms. One is On Leung, the other one is Hip Sing, and then of course you also have the Chinese Freemason, and uh, and the other family uh, associations. Like um, depending on which village that you're from, you could be with the Lee Association, you could be with Chan's Association, the Moys, but some of those associations are also attached to uh, martial arts mogun, like what we have here today. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, I believe some of the Chan's are in the Pray Mantis uh, school. Right, right. There's also the, um, you know, uh, Hong Kun. So these are all martial arts schools, associations, family associations, merchants associations. And there would be internal rivalry as to, you know, what part of Chinatown that you hear, what, you know, how you should. Were they all gang affiliated somehow? It, um, or did some of them? Some of them. Uh, I'm going to try to just, you know, filter down the situation because I really don't want to stir up the old past because there were people that were doing it and there were also individual there were gangs that were just trying to muscle in on the business and uh or try to muscle in on other gangs other business so back in the, the 60s there was the black eagles the white eagles the Kuan Yings, uh and then later on you know you have the, uh, the ghost shadows the guaying and the flying dragons of course and you know well, they, they became more prominent during what the 80s and 80s 90s, and 90s. when uh, benny yang was running the right. godfather of chinatown mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. there was also occasionally uh, somebody from the west coast would come over to the east coast to see if they can try to uh you know muscle in on some of the business because there are some of the associations, like for instance, like On Leung and Hip Sing, they got places in New Orleans, uh, all over. The associations here in Chinatown, they right. had a lot of connections to you know the country and back to the old country, right? Yes. Hong Kong, China, mainland mm-hmm. China. And they have, I mean, you know, it's most of the associations by name and also by chapter. Um, they're almost like the American merchants because, like for instance, On Leung, Hip Sing, you can find them all over the world. Uh, also, you know, with uh, the Hong Cheng, which is the Chinese Freemason, overall Masons. But at the same time, there are other smaller, you know, merchants associations. Um, at, you know, in the beginning, when they first came here, they needed, you know, the group, some of the money. So it was strictly for merchants. Um, they were there to provide financial and, yes, sometimes enforcement or protection. So it depends on how you want to look at it, because the bottom line is, you know, um, when you are a minority in also adjacent to other ethnic enclave, uh, you get tired of people coming in and, you know, trying to muscle in your business at the same time, try to do whatever that normally do. Because you have to remember, this is like, you know, hey, Jake, it's Chinatown, and a lot of business were conducted uh, under the table, and there's also, um, depending on how the business are being conducted, because majority of the time with restaurants and all, there's usually a cash business. You know, with the only thing we can do, you know, laundry, whatever it is, the haircut, the salon, and you name it, there's still happening going on. But um, they needed the muscle. To protect the community from outside forces. Uh, to protect the business. Mm-hmm. Not much, you know, as far as like, um, there's still that coast, you know, the civilians versus the members. Right. And it's almost like if you look at, you know, with um, certain organized crime, you don't mess with civilians. And you also, in Chinatown, you don't mess with uh, foreigners. You don't mess with Bakwai because it's bad for business. Look what happened to uh, San Francisco Chinatown, right? When there was uh, certain gangs and factions had a war, 
And I think in a restaurant, there was uh, some tourism. They were both. They were Bakwais. They were white. Mm -hmm. And they were tourists. Mm -hmm. And they didn't care when all the Asians were killing each other. But as soon as uh, they went into the restaurant and started spraying it up, and there were some innocent bystanders who weren't Asian, got hit with bullets, then, then it became a problem. And almost immediately after... There was a crime unit assigned. They just dismantled that gang and, and decimated it to the point where it's not what it once was. There you go. And it's all about business and commerce. The bottom line is, you know, if you guys want to do your thing, do your thing to make sure that nobody else and no civilian gets hurt. Hence, at that time, the movie The Year the Dragon came out. But that was mm -hmm. shot, um, you know, about New York City. And even though some of the guys that I know that was in that production, they actually did that out of states. But it depicted the fact that uh, there was a lot of, you know, gang violence. There was a lot of shootings. Unfortunately, a lot of times, those stray bullets, you know, they're not going to be super duper, oh, this is a ghost shadow bullet. You know, we're just going to, these bullets will only hit ghosts. Get the hell out of here. You know, and a lot of people back then were lousy shots. And um, so New York, you know, uh, when I came back from the military, one of my favorite hangouts, uh, Golden Star, which is on East Broadway, um, a.k.a. Grandpa's, there was a shooting incident there. And then next thing you know, um, most of the places just you tend to get. And it's just pure bad for business. But, you know, the gangs are there. Um, there are rivalries, uh, fights, shootings, and, and sometimes a little bit of jealousy or whatever it is. And um, drugs there, you know, it's it's all depicted. And a lot of times, you know, people tend to mimic movies, reality. You know, it's, it's not like we're full, you know, Italian mob thing deal, but you know what's there. So you know that, you know, when you have Nicky Louie, you have the shadows, you have, you know, LJ getting shot, in, you know, in front of the precinct. All of that, you know, happened. Gang rivalry happens. Smuggling. Um, um, yeah, all of that. that whatever whatever worked because, you know, you got Shrimp Boy Human out smuggling. there in, in the West Coast. So that's, these are all out there. I mean, if anybody wants to see it, um, you know, you can YouTube Asian gangs. You could YouTube, you know, Chinatown uh, organized crime. All of that is out there right now um, with a lot of the uh, the news background and then you know um you know at one time during we had a short uh infamous with the um btk which is um it's a short-lived vietnamese gang and led by david tai um think so yeah yeah but um the born to kill there was and right by the funeral home it was one of the most survey under surveillance funerals that you know um activities all the cops were around to make sure everything else was, was on the up and up. But um, I miss most of that because I actually left the city uh, in 79. But, but even before that, uh, all of that was going on. Um, drugs, the gambling, and uh, basically, you know, there was every single barbershop, you know, it's, uh, you know, they all have, they all have their own gambling, you know, yeah. and whatever it is. Well, they were extremely violent. Um, when I was a kid coming up, I, I heard of that gang. And I was just like, "Holy crap! What kind of name is?" First of all, the the name. You know what it got it from? Kill. It was actually from the Vietnam War. What the Americans have that on their helmet? So what? That was the the BTK. If you look at one of the, um, it was one of the uh, the Vietnam War movies that that was put on the was Americans' that, helmets. To was the American that, helmet. Then you also that, had a uh, Full Metal Jacket. I believe that it was part that. Yeah. If you if you looked at it, the BTK was actually. On an American helmet, and you also have to remember at the time when there was a massive migration of the Vietnamese coming into America, um, these people were already conditioned to a point that their country was invaded by a foreign force. Mm -hmm. So you were pretty much at the time. A trained. lot of their parents were at the, you know, and if not, at you, the war. if you were young enough to pick up an AK, you're going you to be up. young enough to defend your village. Yeah. So they were born children of war and, you know, they were already collateral damage and, you know, in an environment with nothing to lose. And if they're going to see Chinese gang from Hong Kong coming here, want a piece of the action. You also have to remember that a lot of times in order for you to get into certain areas, you have to use force. 
Because if you have no money, they're always going to say with the criminal, you need that gun, you need the force. You need, and then after that is the only way to get capital to do what you need to do. Because if you don't have that force, you can't get your startup money. Even criminals need startup money. So in order for you to, to get that, and since you don't have generational privilege, you just got here fresh off the boat. What are you going to do? Right. Let's you take it. jack a store. Yeah. And you're going to find the weakest, you know, and they're going to tell you, by the way, you know, you can't go and jack up a loaf on. So guess what? You and know, what's a loaf on for people? Which is say? another, you know, um, term for white people. Mm -hmm. Loaf on or, you know, bak mm -hmm. or whatever. You, yeah. But, you know, the toy sign is called loaf on, loaf on. And mm -hmm. it's like um, that was off limits. But that's, it does not mean that they're not going to do it because you also have to remember opportunities, you know, crimes are opportunity. If it's there, they're going to do it.